Heather, I thought Senator Warnock did something incredibly powerful juxtaposing that imagery against the imagery we've seen so many times um, in the course of the last six weeks, that of white insurrectionists, white supremacist insurrectionists storming the Capitol, and in some cases not having to see any action from law enforcement. It is just a stunning, stunning picture of the two Americas we live in today. That's right. And Rep- Representative Cannon is, is, was up to good trouble, and she is now going to be someone whom we all know and look to. She was in Stacey Abrams' uh, former seat. Um, but she was doing something on behalf of Black Georgia, but she was also doing something on behalf of a multiracial coalition of voters who waded through high water to do the impossible on January 5th. And the thing that the Republicans never seem to understand is that when they use a a club uh, to beat down the power of the American people, they're not just hitting their own voters. This is what happens time and time again. When the right wing attacks the franchise and the right to vote, it, of course, hits the target, first and worst, black Americans who are more likely to use early voting, more likely uh, to use um, all of the different, the, have the long lines that are now being um, targeted with this ridiculous making it a crime to give people water. Um, but it's also something that impacts voters of all races in Georgia. Everyone likes to have an early voting window. Nobody wants partisan hacks to be challenging voters left and right. This is the promise and peril of American democracy. All our votes have to count, or effectively none of them does. Greg, to Heather's point, I can imagine there are Georgians who maybe weren't even following the the back and forth over this voter restriction bill and and its progress through the state legislature and have been Uh, accosted with the images this morning, the juxtaposition of Governor Kemp in there signing this law that's going to disproportionately disenfranchise voters of color, a black lawmaker knocking at the door and getting arrested, and who find the whole thing distasteful, who have been awoken to the injustices taking place in their own state. How is it playing in Georgia? Yeah, I think that Park Cannon's arrest has become a symbol of this legislation, and I, I expect it to be brought up on the halls of Congress as their as, as federal lawmakers are are considering federal uh, voting rights legislation um, in Georgia. Certainly, it, it overshadowed uh, what was expected to be a, a victory lap of sorts for Republicans um, who who wanted to revel in the fact that this 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 legislation had been signed into law, and instead all the focus, or a lot of the focus last night, was on the arrest of, of Representative Park Cannon um, in the aftermath. And for the next few weeks, this is going to be playing out on the campaign trail, in the halls of Congress, and in the courthouse, where a lawsuit has already been filed challenging the constitutionality of these of these sweeping new restrictions. Greg, it also sounds like it's going to be playing out in the business sector. There's now a lot of pressure on businesses that do business, <laughs> that have their businesses, in Atlanta, in Georgia, to rethink that. Can you tell us about the the latest on that front. Yeah, we're talking about Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Delta. Um, th- these are major Atlanta-based corporations that have played an outsized role in Georgia politics and in Georgia legislation for years, um, wading into perilous debates in some senses and, and staying out of them in others. And activists and voting rights advocates have been infuriated that these that some of these companies, at least, have tiptoed around the issue. They have not taken um, uh, strident stances. They have not taken uh, outspoken stances against some of these restrictions. And there, there's even calls for boycotts and other sort of economic repercussions. Um, and I think that's also one of the reasons why Governor Kemp has so, so hastily signed this into law. I think he was worried that there'd be a, an even larger campaign, of a pressure campaign. And that's why, you know, these, these, these pieces of legislation, they usually take days of vetting. And in this case, it was signed within basically an hour of final approval in the, in the Georgia Senate. So I think he wanted to thwart any sort of public pressure campaign. Well, <laughs> Reverend Sharpton, I should ask you, do you have your plane ticket to Atlanta yet? I would assume that you will be down there acting as a pressure Absolutely. point on these Republican lawmakers. Absolutely. We'll be in Atlanta. We're going to Minneapolis for the opening of the trial and then going into Atlanta. We have an office in Atlanta, Reverend Saylor. Clearly, uh, uh, this is what has to happen. And the corporate world, you have major corporations there in Atlanta and throughout Georgia that has to take a stand. At the same time, we need to put pressure on the U.S. Senate to pass, which was H.R. 1 and 4, which is now Senate 1, uh, this bill 
to deal with federal voting laws. And I think that clearly we are where we were 40 years ago in the Civil Rights Movement when I was just a little kid, where you need federal law to supersede the state laws. Because what we're looking at now is states' rights on voting. The Senate must establish national voting rights laws at a federal level. So we're talking to clergymen in West Virginia about they ought to be putting uh, their pressure on Man on Mansion. We're talking about cinema in Arizona, clergymen there, faith leaders and activists there. We cannot afford not to have federal law here. What stopped segregation was not state to state, state legislators. It was the Civil Rights Act of 64 federal and then the Voting Rights Act of 65. So we need to be in Atlanta and in Washington and in Minneapolis and put the pressure on. And I think, Heather, we would do well to all read your book. But one of the points that you make is while black and brown voters are, you know, often the most disenfranchised in this moment, this affects anybody who's working, anybody who has to stand online for eight hours and might need water. That's that that kind of need doesn't see skin color. That's just a basic human need. You know, all of us. Are, it is to the detriment of all of our democracy to see voter restriction laws like this passed across the country. That's right. I mean, this goes back to the core quandary of American democracy. The the founders broke with a European tradition of monarchy and bet on a radical idea of self-governance, and yet they compromised with their own ideals from the start. They left holes in the bedrock of our democracy to leave room for slavery and racism, and that has been the tension ever since. This is the opportunity, this is democracy's moment for the United States Senate to take up the For the People Act and pass it. Joe Manchin, Senator Joe Manchin issued a letter uh, earlier this week that outlined the parts of the bill that he could approve of. But I want to be clear that, and I applaud him, there were a lot of pieces around voting rights and election integrity and disclosure that he said, I'm supportive of this. And that is great. The last thing we needed would be to fight with Democrats about some of these basic, basic reforms. And yet, most of the provisions of that bill are super majority popular. Campaign finance reform, nonpartisan redistricting, uh, the idea that every American has the right to vote and that that should be enshrined in federal law and that politicians shouldn't be able to pick their voters, rather voters should pick their politicians. There's a super majority in support of democracy. The only thing the right wing has is a racist lie about election fraud. That is the only thing they have going for them. We have democracy on our side. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.